Steve Eiserman and the Detroit Red Wings just pulled off the steal of the offseason. And is the rebuild coming to a close? I'll discuss this and much more coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ. Hi, I'm your host, Casey, and welcome back to Hattrick HQ. With that said, let's get right into the main topic of this video here, which is... Eiserman solidifies his decor, and yes, if you were turned it, tuned in to the NHL news yesterday, you would have seen that the Detroit Red Wings uh, traded for Jeff Petrie from Montreal on 50% saying, uh, retained uh, salary. Sorry, uh, In return, Montreal Canadiens received Gustav Lindstrom and a conditional fourth round pick for 2025. Uh, in this, athle in this athletic uh, article that they posted here about the trade, they say, obviously, they get a guy in Jeff Petrie who played well over 22 minutes a night last season for about 2.3 million AAV, which is a great addition, a great offensive right shot defenseman to, to add to that top four. Uh, I think this is a really great pickup for Detroit at, at a really low at a really low risk. But now they also say that it creates a bit of a log jam now uh, in their defensive system, um, but... Uh, that term, like they say, is overused. Uh, it's obviously great to have a, a really good 7th uh, D-man that you can rely on and that can work his way into the roster when need be. You know, if they're on lo long road trips or someone goes down with injury, it's nice to have that extra guy who can go in and take the load off of any of those players. But they also go on to say here that Petrie has been probably Detroit's best summer defensive acquisition, which I would have to strongly agree with. Uh, obviously, he's going to slide into that top four role next season. Uh, and, and they they beg the question here, who do they sit? Do they sit Ole Mata, who they just extended for two more seasons? Shane Gossespierre, who they brought in on a $4.125 million contract to help the power play? Ben Sherratt or Justin Hole, two of the three highest paid defensemen, but both who have three years remaining and are supposed to bring physicality and defense to the back end. And they obviously say, there's no obvious answer. In another in 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 this same article, they also go on to say that it just makes the Red Wings deeper, and the only way the way that this is going to benefit Detroit is their goaltending. If they have such solid defense on the back end, it's going to help Philly Huso uh, drastically this year. I think he's going to have a great year because of this. But they also go on to say here. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see with it, with a very crowded back end like their projected top pair is Mo Sider and Jake Wallman and they now and like I said they now have to sit one of those guys who I just mentioned before and uh, it's it's a good thing like I said uh, they it's good for injuries uh, in recent years you know Detroit's uh, defensemen have struggled with injuries so maybe Ogden was just picking them up to uh, potentially. Uh, fill the role of those guys who have been going down with injuries. Uh, but like I said, I think this is a great win for Detroit. Uh, obviously, like I said yesterday in our in our other video about this trade, I think it was a win for Montreal as well. I think this was a great pickup by Eisenman at very low risk at, at two point three million on your salary cap for a seasoned ten year veteran in this league who has proven that he can go out there and score 40 or more points a season uh, and play a fair amount of games at his age. I think last season he played 63 games at 34 years old. So, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see. And I know a lot of Detroit fans may be concerned now that their back end is kind of clogged up a little bit. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned because, you know, a few of their guys there are, are a bit older. And they deserve a night off every now and then, you know. So say, let's just for example, they sit Olimata. Uh, if Olimata, you know, gets in for twenty or thirty games, that's just taking the load off of other other players. And he's still a great defenseman who can go in and shut it down on the back end. But I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on this trade down in the comment section below. Uh, do you think this is a win for Detroit? Because I really do. I think you know, getting a 40 point plus defenseman great offensive defenseman with a booming shot who can also step up and help on that power play unit if need be uh it's just a great acquisition uh for this team uh, a great player to add uh, now looking to push for the playoffs i believe with this addition and they're just solidifying that decor i know their head coach Lalonde was talking last season about he wanted to improve the decor and that's what Ozerman did this offseason. So, Red Wings fans, 
I sit tight because I believe the Red Wings are in for a dandy of a season here. I think, you know, with those top six names we just mentioned, Hull, uh, Sherratt, Gossespierre, Petrie, Wallman, and Mo Sider, I think this is going to take the load drastically off the goaltending. And I think Philly Huso is going to have a great year for this hockey club, Ed. But they also, you got to remember, they also have James Reimer there, who is a seasoned vet as well uh, in this league. So he can come in on any given night and shut the door. I think they got an underrated one two punch there in Huso and in uh, Reimer. So. I think this Detroit team's going to make a run this year, uh, in my opinion. But we're going to get into the second topic of this video, which is the Red Wings rebuild is coming to a close. And yes, uh, obviously Detroit has been struggling over the past few years. And, you know, it's just because there were they had to rebuild after their cup teams, you know. And I think that rebuild is coming to an end. As we take a look at their projected lineup for opening night... Obviously, that big addition of Alex Dabrinkit uh, at the left wing position uh, with Dylan Larkin down the middle and David Perron. I think that is a sneaky line for them this year. I think Perron is a great person to have up there with guys like Larkin Dabrinkit, a big body who can kind of park himself in front of the net. And he's a great passer as well. I put up 56 points last season and played all 82 games. And same with Dabrinkit. He played all 82 games last year as well. And when you have two great players who can pass the puck, like Dabrinkit and Perron, to a guy like Dylan Larkin, who can score, uh, it's just going to be a recipe for success with that top line. But there's nothing to sleep on their second line as well, with JT Comfort and Robbie Fra Fabry with, you know, that young star in Lucas Raymond, who I think we are going to see throughout this season get a taste of the first line with Alex Dabrinkit and Dylan Larkin. I think this is a great line. I think this is going to be an underrated line this season. Obviously, Comfort coming off 52 points last year. Uh, it's just huge for them. And, and Robbie Fabry, at one point in his career, was a big, a highly touted prospect. Uh, now at 28 years old, I think I think we could still uh, look at, uh, at Fabry, or, sorry, at 27 years old. I think we can still... Count Fabry in for at least 25 to 30 points this season, especially if he's playing with such skilled players like Lucas Raymond and JT Confer. But obviously, when we get down to the bottom six, is solid as well with, with Fisher, Kopp, and Rasmussen. I know Rasmussen was on the IR. I think he should be good to go for the end of the season, or, or for the beginning of the season, sorry. But like you said, they're four and their fourth line with Valeno, man, he's a he's a great player too. Uh he you know, he's only twenty three. He got the potential. I think we could see him maybe uh get a bump up to the third line throughout this season. Uh, I think the forward core of the Detroit Red Wings has that scoring ability, and I think we're gonna see great things come out of this forward core in Detroit this year. And like we talked about, their defense is just going to be solid. They have Sider and Wallman, a great offensive defenseman with a great defensive defenseman. I think this line is going to be underrated this year. I think Sider is going to go for at least, I'm going to call 60 points right now. And I, and I think I clocked Raymond in for around 70. I think the key to the Detroit Red Wings' success this year is having those young guys in Sider and and Raymond have big years. I think if these guys have great years, I think Detroit's a playoff team. And I think when the playoffs come around, I think this is going to be a great team that can make a push and can surprise a lot of teams. And obviously, like we talked about, Petrie and Sherratt uh, as their second period, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Gostasper is going to bump up there with Petrie. Uh, I think, you know, Petrie's just such a great offensive defenseman. And when you got a, a great puck-moving defenseman like Shane Gostasper, I think those guys are going to go hand-in-hand -hand with each other. And, and, when, and on the third line, Justin Hole, Ben Sherratt, two guys who can just go out there and grind other offenses down. Both big physical guys who like to get in the corners, who like to build lay the body this is a great defense one of the most underrated defenses in all the nhl right now and obviously like i talked about philly who so last year obviously putting up a, a eight nine six with 26 wins but like i said i think uh this year is definitely uh the, the detroit red wings year i think 
It's going to be the best season they've had in a long time. I think they're going to definitely make the playoffs. I'm going to count them in as my dark horse right now. I think uh, the Atlantic is kind of wide open right now, and I think that Detroit could run away with it if they stay healthy, and Vili Husso has a good year, and I think he will. At only 28 years of age as well, I think he's got a lot to prove. I think he proved a lot uh, during his time uh, in the Blues organization. I think now getting that starter role here in Detroit, I think he's just going to blossom. But I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on the future of the Red Wings down in the comments section below. And Detroit fans, what are you predicting this year? Are you predicting a, a playoff appearance from the Red Wings? Or uh, do you think they're going to make a, a deep playoff run? I'd like to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. But... Thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We're trying to hit 250 subscribers before the season uh, starts. So make sure to smash that subscribe button. We've been enjoying putting this content out to you guys. So make sure to smash that subscribe button. But for now, I've been KC. Keep your stick on the ice.